Okay, we'll be starting the next session, My Amazing Pearl. And uh, we have Dr. Chaitra Jaydev over here, uh, who will be one of the judges. Can we invite Dr. Nat uh, we would like to invite Dr. Natasha Radhakrishnan, please, to please share her pearl. Oh, okay. Mine is like much later in the list. That was oh, I here it's number one. You are listed as the first. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> pearl number one. <laughs> Do you have a scoring sheet or something? Good evening, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to present uh, something little different. And the blame is on Chitra, madam, because she told me not to speak ophthalmology. So this pearl is not about ophthalmology at all. Uh, and this presentation is not meant to malign any XY chromosomes in this room. And you're all good men, and it is not my intention to state or insinuate anything to Are the contrary. <laughs> so this is a picture from medical school. You have almost equal number of ladies and uh, gentlemen in coming in for uh, becoming doctors. And you will find the ladies are walking in front in everything, in academics, in uh, clinics, in uh, all the activities that is going on. But then what happens 10 years later? 10 years later, you will find a room like this. If you just look around how many ladies are there, you can count on your fingers. So what happens to us? What happens on the way? That's what I would like to talk about. Finally, what matters is the judges are women here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Both the judges are women. <laughs> I really don't think you can complain, but anyway. <laughs> If you look at the list of the judges, I think <laughs> they, the, the, the men judges were kind of afraid. They were, yeah, they were, they were yeah. like, you know. <laughs> so this is what happens to us on the way. So we become doctor moms, and then we are managing everything. We're doing the cooking, we're doing the washing, we're doing the uh, managing the household, cleaning, sweeping, and taking care of our super super duties. mom, not doctor mom. Moms, yeah. <laughs> so we get torn between career and family and most of the time end up compromising one or the other. But what can we do? So that is my pearl to all of you. It is to the uh, women in this uh, room, maybe not applicable to the ones, all, the, all those who have come here, but the younger ones who, to whom you can spread the message and to all the men who probably can spread it even better. So the first thing that we have to do is to dream. So we have to dream what we want to do in our life and we have to try to uh, you know, reach out to achieve that. If you don't have a dream, then there is no point. If your dream is to have a baby and you know, stay with your family and have a good family life, that is good. That is good and you can achieve that. But if you want to go something beyond that, you have to dream about it. Without that, you're not able to achieve anything. And the next thing is to plan. I find that the younger generation they, they do not take the planning into their hands. I have postgraduates in my institute who just become pregnant one month after their uh, uh, marriage. Why on earth would they not plan? Why? I don't understand because it's like they never got into that gynecology class at all. So just, just plan. Plan your family. Plan your career. Plan what you will do two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. Just like the men do. The men have that in like in a racetrack, while the women have it like some kind of uh, kacha road along the rural uh, villages of India. <laughs> so that planning has to come. And that includes family planning. And sometimes in spite of your best laid plans, it can go wrong. So I became pregnant in my final year of PG. The plan was to come out and finish everything by November and then I'll deliver in February. But I ended up with twins. So uh, things do go a little bit away from your plan. So you should have not only plan A, but B, C, and D. 
and prioritize so stop multitasking and prioritize so when you need to give importance to your family you give importance to that when you need to give importance to your career you give importance to that don't try to do everything together at the same time it is okay to take a break and then you know come back to it but in the meantime you have to keep that fire in you burning and you should not let the world douse it that is my message to all of you thank you dr nandasha yeah, i think it was a wonderful message you that uh, you have given here, wonderful time here at dreamcon and a great life ahead thank you to all the trainees and teachers of aws ldp and especially dear chitra ma'am for everything she put in a great effort over the last two years thank you yeah. so much thank you thank you very much so another leader who's been leading all us you know men taskmasters for us uh, dr chitra so as i said women are now in the leadership roles and true to tell you the truth more than 80% of the residents that we have in rp center are women and uh, uh, let's wait for i think 10 more years and then we'll have a, a men a uh, a uh, uh, men of ophthalmology society so that we men, can men you know think, <laughs> from a was will move to mos men <laughs> men will be saying please plan yeah <laughs> <laughs> even in yeah everywhere i mean uh, like i said it's now uh, can we now call dr navendu rai please for sharing his pearl a very good to all i was asked by chitra ma'am to uh, present my pearl on my practice so a pearl that made a difference to my practice this is what i was asked to present so when i came out from my fellowship my mentor dr professor s natarajan he not only gave me a certificate that it, but there was a lot more than that that quietly imbibed in myself and that can be it can be can be seen it reflects in my practice so what was that what is best for this patient i can to that confidence i got from him but there is a difference between confidence and overconfidence that we need to judge on our ourselves we need to upgrade our skills being trained in surgical vr i'm also doing phaco surgery so what happens complications of cataract surgery they don't haunt me so uh, the surgical vr training it was very beneficial for my cataract practice and i am in a small town so uh, i can manage both the wisdom from my dad what was what all those things were always have a spot soft spoken behavior this is what i learned from him always remember patient is in pain your attitude should be calming it helps in faith building amma babuji bhaiya bhabhi beta babu these words when you speak these words the patient connects with you and they open up never lose your patience believe me you can avoid more than 90% of your court cases thankfully touchwood i have i don't have any case right now yeah after 10 years of practice build a relationship a healthy one don't worry sir don't worry ma'am i'll take care of your problem the patient gains confidence in you and he or she opens up a very um, i mean uncooperative amma ji suddenly becomes cooperative after you say these words in your ot so ldp attending ldp enhances your thought process because there are leaders who are guiding you about your practice enhancement enhancements you need to see where you fit in and grow your practice with their wisdom so my pearl for a successful practice would be be confident in your surgical skills but never let pride overpower your head keep calm and maintain a soft spoken behavior you will definitely succeed in your practice and definitely the leadership development program helps in that thank you parikshit parikshit thank you so much dr navendu for sharing that pearl i would like to invite dr manoj saswade dr manoj is here so we now have dr chaitra jaydev dr merin paul dr jatender singh bhalla and dr pari parikshit 
go get it. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm thankful to Dr. Chitra Madam. She has asked me to present my surgical pulse. So I have selected our topic of management of ectopia lentis in a children's with the Sionis ring or SA ring. Other, you know that the Marfan syndrome is autosomal dominant connective tissue disorder. It affects usually cardiac, skeletal and ocular systems. I, particularly in ocular, it causes the my, uh, lenticular myopia and astigmatism. Sometimes diplopia is very common and some retinal lesions like lattice degeneration and retinal detachments are very common. Uh, the surgical technique we will see directly in the video. Uh, this is almost uh, more than 180 degree zonular deviations or uh, ectopia lentis. Previously, I used to do the lensectomy, vitrectomy and scleral fixation. I felt. Once I achieved the technique or learned the skill of managing this by doing the rexis properly and putting the Sionis ring, then I started uh, managing it without the vitreous loss. Now you can see that the rexis was done. The, the so cataract was very soft. That's why only with the eye irrigation aspiration it was managed now the sion is ring is tied to nine zeros proline here it was taken implanted into the back and tied to the sclera you can see that the sclera as if we are doing a scleral fixation we have not anchored it to the sclera and the ba back is full now completely without a single drop of vitreous coming into the anterior chamber and we have implanted the three piece eye in this case the capsular polishing was done because these are the young uh, children, the PCO is the rule, so it is better to do the PC polishing as well as the anterior capsular polishing. And here you can see the, the in the back IOL is implanted. As the advantages of you know that the in the back uh, IOL is there and that is very important in cases of Marfan's where the angle pathologies are there, glaucomas are very common and retinal detachments are common if the vitreous is disturbed. Uh, this is another uh, uh, next case. This was again uh, the left eye of the same patient. The key, key component is the making the rexis properly. And uh, once you are doing the rexis and you should be ambidextrous in sometimes with the left hand also you have to use under the iris to make the perfect rexis. With the eye only the uh, cortical cleanup is done. Again the Sionis ring is implanted. Usually it makes little bit uh, uh, difficult to put the Sionis ring with the such a huge or large dehiscence or uh, subluxation. But once it is in the place, you can see that it will hook the anterior capsule and the bag is ready for the implantation of the eye oil. You can see the complete back there is no vitreous loss at all previously i again repeat that i used to do the lensectomy vitrectomy and uh, scleral fixation of iron and third case here even if there is a uh, double uh, deiscence or the uh, ectopia in inferiorly as well as superiorly i did the uh, good rexis and after that i was done and we have implanted the two rings first is a sionis ring which was anchored with the uh, 8 0 gothic suture. Here you have to take care that the bag is not ruptured. Certificate. Uh. It is taken out. Again, the Sionis ring is okay. sutured to this gothic and implanted properly. Then, inferiorly, we have used that this is an AC anchor. This is a device from the uh, company, Israel company, that is Hanita, and it hooks the anterior capsule. Uh, to the sclera. The two, two pranks of this one goes behind the anterior capsules and pull uh, towards the periphery. And now you can see that this is properly anchored. Both the cortex now <coughs> properly sutured to the sclera and the knot is covered with the scleral, partial scleral thickness flap and three piece eye is used particularly to make the more 
stability to give the more stability to the this is that uh, we know that the ectopial lentis is there then the surgical options are intracapsular extracapsular cataract surgery or putting the iris claw or extracapsular cataract uh, ACI oils sometimes we do the SF oils also but this technique I found very useful and in a long run in particularly these people uh, survive for 70 to 80 years and those cases would suffer the retinal detachments particularly because of the vitreous disturbances which is not uh, in in such situations if you maintain the vitreous or anterior hyaloid phase is intact that's the thing thank thank you very much thank you dr manoj uh, for that pearl we would like to invite dr athiray varman for uh, sharing his pearl dr aditreya varman oh welcome Dr. Bhavna is here. Okay, thank you. So good evening everybody. So my pearl today is the role of social media in today's practice and why should we even bother to enhance our online presence on the internet. So here are some simple statistics you can just pull off Google. So 5% of all Google searches are related to healthcare. The first two lines tell you uh, three times more visitors come to your hospital after they've searched and looked up for you. 44% of patients who surf and fish for options on the websites for a healthcare provider are more likely to go ahead and schedule an appointment. 53% of patients who don't find a video of your hospital don't know you, you exist basically. And only takes one to six online reviews for potential patients to form an opinion about your practice. So one bad review can drive, drive them away. So why have an online presence? One, you get to tell your story to the audience. You get to tell them who you are and what you do. You make your presence known. It's cost effective. It costs you little to no, nothing to go ahead and um, uh, put out your content online. It also highlights the services that you're offering. So we have to touch upon the fact of something known as search engine optimization. This is the algorithm that, that all the search engines use to determine the order of the results which appear when a person goes ahead and types in something on Google. So basically, let's, go, uh, let's say you go ahead and type something on Google related to ophthalmology, let's say cataract surgery. It goes ahead and indexes hundreds of ranking factors or signals, look, looks at the online presence and gives it an order at which it ranks the um, uh, hospitals in the Google website. It can be Google, Yahoo or Bing, whatever. So search is often the primary source of digital traffic into your practice. So these are the hierarchy of search engine optimizations. One, you need to have a good website. The website should be user friendly. It should be uh, fast, easy to use shouldn't have too many pop-ups or complications where in which the patients are uh, put off and they move away. Should be keyword optimized. It should, use, it should have the words the patient is looking for and it should obviously have compelling content as well. So website optimization, as I said, should be user-friendly. It should highlight the key services which you intend to show to your patient. It should have the correct keywords with the content that keeps the patient engaged. So here's an example of the same. This is our website. You look, look at it, it's very simple, very clean. It has the um, uh, front page content which uh, we want to tell a patient about. We want to tell them about our microscope, our uh, laser cataract surgeries. That's what we put out there. We use very simple terms. We don't uh, drive them away by using complicated uh, terminologies. We don't say phaco emulsification, two millimeter incision, no. We just say best treatment. We use the word laser, etc. And then on the top, you can see it's, uh, there's some tabs here about our services and our training programs and whatnot. Patients can go ahead and cl click on it and every tab gives them a very brief uh, um, information about the services that we offer. It's very easy to na navigate through all of them and get the information that they want to. Another thing that we've recently implemented on the website is a 24-7 chatbot. This is a uh, software uh, developed by a company called Gravitas AI. So this basically uh, is able to chat and interact with the patients on a 24-7 basis. So whenever they pop on our website and ask the bot any questions, 
for example uh, you, they can go over and ask it is cataract surgery painless is it painful does it take a long time such basic questions and terminologies and information can be communicated via this chatbot so what do i mean by optimizing your search engine optimization one you have to tailor your content across all platforms you can't just keep it in one place you can't just keep it on facebook can't just keep it on instagram it has to be on a website it has to be on facebook has to be on instagram has to be on youtube has to be on twitter all the major websites the content quality should be the same across all the board of the websites you should use the correct keywords you cannot use uh, very complicated terminologies sitting on youtube and explaining the patient a 20 minute video about cataract surgery is not going to help very simple terminologies bladeless painless easy quick recovery all of these capture the patient's attention there's also something you can use called a keyword planner so this is something you can go to google and look for it's called a google keyword planner so you go ahead and type in cataract and it tells you what patients around your area are searching for so let's say you go ahead to the key keyword planner and type in cataract it will tell you okay uh, the most common searches your patients are doing related to cataract are is cataract surgery painless what is the cost of it uh, how soon can i recover so all of these are keywords which you can take and implement into your content to keep the patient engaged so this is an example of good uh, uh, search engine optimization so uh, if i go ahead and type in smile lasik in chennai right now on google because we have optimized our search engine effectively we have mentioned smile surgery in our website one and we also got a lot of our patients to go to our google uh, uh, page and give us google reviews which mentioned the word smile laser surgery quick recovery etc so google has now decided that, that when patients go ahead and click uh, smile lasik in chennai on google our um, uh, hospital comes up on top so this is an effective way to optimize a search engine now okay the people now know okay fine uh, our institution that does uh, smile surgery so they go ahead go ahead and uh, type in umai clinic uh, smile next they are now uh, directed to the, all of our youtube videos on smile so this is an example of social media integration where one content leads the patient to another which keeps them engaged throughout their search so what do i mean by compelling content so what almost done sir so a patient uh, desire one simple solutions to their problems which are cost effective and resolvable in a timely manner let's look at this uh, ad from pristin so why are these people so successful let's look look at the terminology laser cataract surgery precise bladeless painless all insurance accepted no cost emi 20 minutes it under, it ticks all the boxes here this is the reason why these people are effective and this is the type of targeting we need to do as well so in summary in today's day and age online presence is essential you have to highlight the service you want your audience to know is being performed use effective search engine optimization and effective results come from building an online presence with consistent effort through months or even years i thank you for your attention thank you dr verman for that pearl i would now like to invite dr bhavna khurana that is the last presentation for the day and then we will have the completion certificate distribution ceremony and we are very grateful to our past president dr mahipal sachdev sir humko kuch baat karna hai ha who will be doing the presentation bol de aa jaake humko bol de bas hum chale jayenge bol de jaiye boli wo ho jane to main pehle boli uske baad aur uske baad acha theek good evening everybody uh i would be presenting on my amazing pearl which made a difference to my ophthalmic practice so uh, when we started out the ophthalmic practice like this figure here there were so many things that had to be juggled right from practice management to doctor patient relationship to staff training to self training and continued medical education family life balancing so uh, to overcome all of that what i applied is the first principles thinking which says you identify your assumptions break down the problems and create try to create new solutions applying the first principles thinking the four things that i came up with that needed immediate attention were the doctor patient relationship staff education social media marketing and how i would educate myself continuously to get better and better the first principles thinking then let me to the principle called the aggregation of marginal gains which says break down everything you could think of that goes into self improvement and then improve it by marginal 1% to get a significant increase when you put them all together that was the mantra that i started applying for my daily improvement so we expect growth to progress to be linear and quick 
and months and years later we realized the true value of the previous work that we had put in which can result in the phenomenon called the value of disappointment however we realized that this work is not actually wasted it is not ma until much later that the full value of the previous efforts is relieved revealed so marginal gains daily to do these what does it take it takes a method which you need to put into place because a goal only changes your life for the moment and that's the counterintuitive think about improvement what we really need to change are the methods that are causing those results this is why most people find themselves reverting to their old habits after they have accomplished a particular goal true long term thinking is goalless thinking and not about a single accomplishment whereas it is about the cycle of endless refinement and continuous improvement that we need to endeavor for now how do we establish a system that actually works and we stick to it Uh, it has been started that maximum motivation occurs when we face a challenge which is just of manageable difficulty which is known as the yerkes dodson law which describes the optimal level of arousal as the midpoint between boredom and anxiety and that is what we need to target once we establish a system it is all the more important to stick to it stepping up when it's annoying or painful or draining to do that's what makes the difference between a professional and an amateur So coming to the four areas that I pinpointed on first was relationship building because relationships compound people reflect your behavior back to you so for the doctor patient relationship as in everything else you never get a second chance to make a first impression so what i decided to do was to give 2 minute extra chair time per patient in knowing about the patient's general information the family history stressing on importance of eye check up of all kids other family members asking them personal questions like where they are from what they do for fun or if they have any children i realized patients enjoy talking about what is going on in their lives and it's a great way to build up connection with them the second thing i wanted to improve on was staff education and for the daily marginal improvement i decided to give 15 minutes each day to this improving marginally might not be particularly notable in the beginning but it can be far more meaningful especially in the long run because when we repeat 1% errors day by day by replicating poor decisions duplicating tiny mistakes it's a accumulation of many missteps that eventually leads to a drastic problem so uh, for staff education i felt communicate communicate and then communicate again with your staff set a formal training process to make sure that all staff members learn what is required of them schedule regular meetings and training sessions with them lectures with handouts and supplementary online resources that we can suggest to them even invite guest lectures and enlist various staff members to help with training so that the team does not tune out tune out do some role playing various of various scenarios with the staff members to further hone up their skills i think you have to conclude so uh the third thing was um on marketing social media marketing uh to dedicate 10 to 15 minutes per day uh so uh and the fourth was 1% improvement in my knowledge database 15 minutes per day on the latest studies and journals 15 minutes per day on the latest surgical techniques uh as warren buffett says that's how knowledge works it builds up like compound interest So after I applied all of these principles what I realized was my subspecialty practice improved with increased referrals I was doing increasingly difficult complex cases and resurgeries with much improved surgical outcomes my workflow was streamlined there was time efficiency there was a positive patient feedback the OPD numbers increased the surgical cases increased and in general the adverse events reduced so 1% better every day is what I aimed for thank you that was a wonderful talk thank you actually uh, before we give the completion certificates i just want to say a few words to you all it's most unfortunate that we did uh, meet virtually in the last couple of years and could not meet in person it's just now it's happening and um, it's just that there are some 60 70 of the quiz candidates sitting in that other hall for the last half an hour so what i would do is uh, i thought i'd take a group photograph with you all now after just this few words and then uh, give away the first few certificates and doctor uh, with dr mahipal and the rest would be given by dr satyajit but you can be sure i'm mentally here with you all uh, the few words which i wanted to talk to you all uh, was i really took on this mantle of uh, chairperson arc with a great desire to do something towards uh, this 
very important uh, leadership development program because this is something leadership has been something very close to my heart and um, it felt to me that uh, the though I do I try to hold on to you all for one more year because I knew I was hoping that the COVID would get over and there would be a physical meeting where I could be able to interact better so the GC gave me permission to keep you all for two more year one more year so in a sense we've been together for two years but it's only today we are meeting uh, all of you by one but I want to tell you all in earth earnest that I'm sure between us we did learn about leadership in its various formats the challenges which come in our ophthalmic career and the need for us to constantly constantly reinvent ourselves yes covid did hint uh, in the physical meetings but again i think uh, you all have uh, exposed uh, with me barraging you all with all those webinars arc webinars i'm sure you all would have heard some bit of those science uh, scientific details also and i'm sure uh, we got together both on the leadership front and on the academic front I do hope you have those fond memories which I have with all of you. I would wish that this dear family of 2020 badge would continue to stay connected with us and that we are able to have physical meetings over the ensuing year. And if opportunities come up, I would like to be in touch with you all and try to include you all in those physical meetings. And I do hope that you do uh, are able to spare that little time and join in for that physical meeting as and when uh, it unfolds because I would try my best for the next two batches. So if you all are able to come, I would be in touch with you all. We are anyway in the same WhatsApp group. Don't uh, delete it. We'll be together. And let's at least meet up for one physical meeting. Okay? So thank you so much. Thanks a lot for imposing so much uh, faith in me. Shall we take one uh, photograph here? Just one hurry before I lose all those quiz candidates. All LDP candidates are permanent invitees to all uh, LDP programs in future also. Yes. Passing out batch. I'm not standing on anything. Hey, and by the way, thank you, judges. Thank you so much. Thank you.
want to lose your space, people. I would. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, wait. I know you can't start. Okay, just four. I'll give you the highest marks. <laughs> that is important. <laughs> We would like to invite Dr. Aditya Varman. Aditya Varman. Aditya Varman, please. Dr. Abhishek Anand. Sabka. हाँ फोटो लेते जाइए डॉक्टर अभिषेक आनंद डॉक्टर अदिति त्रिपाठी डॉक्टर अदिति त्रिपाठी डॉक्टर अकबर मुदम डॉक्टर आलोक अग्रवाल Dr. Aditi? Aditi or not? Dr. Aman Khanna? Dr. Anil Kumar Singh? Dr. Anirudh Mahindrakar? Anika Gupta? कि पहले ही अपना ले ली डॉक्टर अनिका गुप्ता डॉक्टर अंकुर सिन्हा डॉक्टर भावना खुराना डॉक्टर चिनप्पा डॉक्टर चिंतन देसाई डॉक्टर फजल खुरम We specially invited Dr. Mahipal Sadev for this presentation. Dr. Gayatri Mahadevan. Dr. Gayatri Mahadevan. Dr. Gautami Sharma. Indraveer Mishra. In 2020, when the COVID came, suddenly nobody knew what had to be done. And that was the time Dr. Mahipal Sardev was the president. And he showed the most true leadership thing of how to take AIUS forward. Nobody knew about webinars, what to do next. And we were in a big mess. And I think I've been seeing AIUS since I was a kid. My father was also the president of AIUS. And I think his has been the most difficult uh, presidential term and he handled it so well he handled it so well hats off to him dr kalyan dr krishna bhojwani dr krishna bhojwani dr madan gopalan dr madan gopalan Dr. Manoj Saswade. Dr. Mayank Bansal. Dr. Mayur Datta Barali. Dr. Mayank Bansal. Dr. Mayur Datta. Dr. Natasha Radhakrishnan. Dr. Navakant Bandi, Dr. Navendu Rai, Dr. Parul, Dr. Praveen Kumar Monga, Dr. Praveen Kumar Monga, Dr. Pawan Kumar MG.
डॉक्टर प्रशोभ मोहन डॉक्टर प्रियाग्नि सिंह पटेल डॉक्टर पुनीत जैन डॉक्टर रजत महेश्वरी डॉक्टर राजीव गांधी डॉक्टर राकेश शाह डॉक्टर रेनू बेरी डॉक्टर रेनू बेरी डॉक्टर रोहन चारीवाला डॉक्टर साहिल सरपाल प्लीज वेट हियर टू मिनट्स आई जस्ट वांट टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर महिपाल सर टू गिव टू वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम बिफोर वी लीव डॉक्टर साहिल सरपाल डॉक्टर शमन शेट्टी शमन तो यही था अभी डॉक्टर डॉक्टर शहीबा दास श्वेता गुप्ता स्मिता अग्रवाल डॉक्टर सोनल व्यास अंकुर सिन्हा ओके वो बाद में निकाल लें आई लाइक आई लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर महिपाल सरदेव सर और फॉर्मर ऑल इंडिया प्रेसिडेंट टू प्लीज से फ्यू वर्ड्स ऑन दिस ओकेजन थैंक यू वेरी मच सत्यजीत फॉर द काइंड वर्ड्स आई थिंक you have a you have had a great sessions so only thing i'll tell you is that a leader is one who does an exponential change that is something very very important you can as a doctor or a surgeon make linear uh, increments in the sense that you you can do 20 surgeries a day or 15 but that's a linear kind of a thing a leadership uh, quality is something where you create and where you are able to have a vision so what is very very necessary for any one of you who has gone through this is to create a vision and the vision should not be narrow or tubular i think india is today at a point of inflection and your vision should be grand uh, whether you uh, like it or not but uh, uh, there could be people who could be bjp congress or whatever at least the present prime minister is giving that grand vision where the youngsters need to think big and i think a leader has to have a vision created in an organization and create leaders within the organization that is something very very important and then you need to have empathy you need to treat the people as if you are a leader the way you would want to be treated yourself so that is something very very important the goal could be anything a goal could be doing free cataract surgeries or do, doing uh, making uh, more centers or making this thing but the goal of the organization needs to be well defined and you need to exponentially make that goal or that vision grow and you have to motivate people you have to communicate with them and you have to have leadership skills and i what i say is that you have to always lead from the front until of course you set an example yourself that this is what it is even at the age of 64 i think i am the first to enter center for sight and the last to leave center for sight so that that is something that you have to create within your organization you cannot just be blah 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 talking to something until of course you are actually doing it yourself and i am really actually over the years i have seen the quality of the people and their thinking and their inspiration and their aspirations have really gone up within the ophthalmic field and there are a lot of bright young girls and uh, they are uh, i think uh, you can go out and conquer the world uh, indian ophthalmology today has really taken up i would actually have difference of opinion with people jo ek katora leke international conferences mein jaate the ke hame aap charity ke naam pe charity de do jo kuch bhi hai hame mil jaye wo a separate thing i don't think but what we have to show is that scientifically academically skill wise we are the best and we can see when people have shown leadership quality for example indian journal of ophthalmology today is ranked number 3 in the world uk is behind us germany is behind us the only thing is we have to beat china and that we have to us and china and then we come at number 3 if i look at my research gate if i look at my citation index the maximum citations are coming from igo that means people are and maximum is coming from covid as he said we were the first society in the world to actually put down guidelines and to work and to take care of the members whether it was 
from their protection, the patient's protection, and whether it was from the point of view of uh, uh, the uh, the kind of uh, monetary aspects that were happening. So all that I'm trying to say is that we have to project Indian ophthalmology. And within your own spheres, I think this is what Indian ophthalmology is doing. The ARC is doing a great thing by having youngsters inculcated into the science of leadership. We as medical students just think about medicine. We do not have a bigger horizon and that is something very, very important. If you look at the uh, fortune list of 100 richest people in India, guess how many doctors are there? You are there. I'm not there. I'm still not there. Thanks, <laughs> God willing. But how many doctors are there? There are only two. And that is at number 83 and 84. Dr. Pratap C. Reddy followed by Dr. Arvind Lal. So there are only two doctors there out of a list of 100. So that is something that we have to look at. We have to increase our horizon of thought and we have to get the leadership inculcating in the next generation. And I'm proud of all of you because you have the desire, the aspiration, because this is the fullest hall that I have seen uh, today. Uh, I gave a talk on youngsters, etc. So I think uh, God bless and uh, all of you should uh, shine and take Indian ophthalmology to the next level and uh, please be innovative, think out of the box, uh, any idea it's worth and please in leadership also try to patent your ideas. That's something that's lacking in India. You need to patent your ideas so that this is the intellectual capital that you have and we don't know anything about trademarks and patented. I hope you guys can take that thing forward also because it's the idea which, which is there. So again, I think I congratulate all of you for being uh, patiently here listening and I am sure you will go back richer and you will put this into practice. So be a leader, be uh, motivating, be uh, something that you can be proud of in your organization and take your organization to the next level and get people to work. The biggest capital that a leader can employ is human resource. That is the richest and the biggest capital that you have that you need to have people and you need to be a people's person to be a leader. So thank you very much and uh, God bless and again congratulations. <laughs> Those who have joined this year can come in for the picture, please. Abhishek.